Otro video para ti hoy este es Ron con Anetcomputers.com. Mike Lennon sucks. <laughs> the Chicago Bears quarterback, horrible. Four turnovers. Colin, Ka where's Colin Kaepernick? Colin Kaepernick could easily start for the forty for the Chicago Bears. I mean, give me a break. Four turnovers. I told you that Colin Kaepernick has a better quarterback rating than 20 of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL, and yet he's not employed? Gee, I wonder why that is. Okay, let's get to my video. This to me is a gold tip. DNS cash. Now, let me explain how DNS works. And I don't give a fuck about your negative comments. Quit harassing me. Quit trolling me. I don't care if you fucking think my videos are too long. Maybe it's my skin color that is the problem. Again, I went over this before. I don't give a fuck what you think about me or my videos or how long they are. But I save you the grief by m moderating my comments and I save you the time. And I pass on those savings so that you don't have to read the nasty comments I get constantly. DNS. When your computer browses to a website, it's, it's more convoluted and complex than you think. First, it has to use the DNS domain name service. It has to resolve the IP address to the domain name. Back in the day, in the early 90s, DNS was just IP addresses until somebody invented the, the DNS, which resolves IP addresses to, to names so that you can type it in. You don't have to type in the IP address. You don't have to memorize the IP address. However, in order for you to access a website out on the internet, you have to know the IP address and the DNS name. But you also ha have to have an internet service provider and they have to their servers have to be able to resolve the host name from the IP address well a lot of internet internet service providers they have bad horrible slow or just heavily used servers comcast xfinity is notoriously bad there they all you have to do is google search there's a lot of complaints about comcrap xfinities DNS servers. There are some solutions to that. So every time you browse a website, it sends a, it sends packets to that server and then it has to wait for a response. But it goes to the DNS server first. It, then it has to wait for a response. That can take seconds or even longer. Then then it responds back to you and then your that website starts downloading data into your web browser well over time that can cost you a lot of time you, it can chew up your time because you have to your computer has to wait each time for a response well having a local dns caching server is to me a gold tip that i've known about over a decade on linux i use dns max excuse me dns mask excellent tool you can use bind and create your own caching server with that but dns mask is small very little overhead it's an excellent tool this tool i found that i had to study and research and find and test and all that called acrylic is right up there with dns mask it's excellent it's an excellent tool small overhead small install small download I almost never have any problems with it. It starts up at boot with Windows, and actually Acrylic supports Windows 2000, Windows XP, Windows Vista 7, 8, and 10. So I'm gonna show you how to install it and how to use it. So let me go to my remote connection, which is Windows 7. I already have it installed on Windows 8, or excuse me, Windows 10, so I'm gonna demonstrate on Windows 7. So I'm remote into, uh, let me maximize. Now here's what I'm going to prove to you and I'm going to show to you. You go to a command prompt. So go to start 
you could also you could go to start all programs accessories and then right click command prompt or you could type down here in the search box CMD and then right click it you have to have administrative rights I need to include that in my blog post I think I forgot but oh well I'm not perfect but you got these assholes on the internet that boy if you talk too long or I guess if you talk articulately I don't know what their fucking problems are A, a way to test your DNS servers is just to perform a quick lookup, NS lookup, name server lookup. So we're going to do NS lookup google.com. And here's the, this is very important. Let me make this larger for you. I thought I, I thought I changed, but maybe I forgot to save it. Let's see, 8 by 12, click OK. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, an NS lookup is just a name server lookup. There's the name server. It's got the DNS name cdns01.comcast.net 75.75.75.75. Now, then what this what an NS lookup does on Linux and Unix, it's dig. So you would type in dig and then the domain name. On Windows, it's NS lookup and then the domain name that is their address so it resolves the domain name by the IP address 172.217.11.238 this can cause an issue for you because these internet service providers have been using the same old DNS servers for decades possibly now I don't know I just don't know if they have redundancy they use the same IP addresses do they use the the same physical server? I mean, think about it. How many customers do you think Comcrap has? Millions. And they all use the same DNS server. And that can cause problems over time because I'm not saying that it could be old server hardware, they could be cheap. I just don't know. It could just be overuse. They have so much traffic, they have so many users and that can cause a bottleneck that can slow things down so now I'm gonna install this free software and then I'm gonna show you let's see I wanna it should tell you the time on Windows is there a way to you can't use dig that's a problem when you use dig on Linux it tells you the time what we could do is we could do a ping ping google.com you need to test on your own don't just believe everything I say. Test on your own. There might be a way with NS lookup, maybe at toward the end of this. I don't care how long this video takes. This is educational. This could save you potential time. It saves me time because I've known about this gold tip for over a decade. Let's install it. So let's see. I have it in the blog post. So I'll just. Did you know that you can copy and paste files over remote desktop connection? <laughs> I'm being I'm being serious, man. You can yeah, see. Here. Anyways, that's another gold tip that you may not have known about. There's all kinds of gold tips I have that can save you time. Time is money. Computers don't necessarily sometimes to me, sometimes computers can chew up your time. You spend more time with computers. So I'm always looking for ways to, you know, save time. So I'm going to get it from this link. Check out my blog post. It has all the instructions. It tells you, I tell you how to install the program or to get it. It's free. The download link is right here. I show you how to configure the file for your, and add your DNS servers. So now I'm just going to copy and paste into a... Chrome and now there are two versions there's a portable version that you can test well I guess you could keep it if you want but it yeah the problem with the portable version it works is that every time you reboot your computer you have to restart the service the full install automatically creates a service in Windows it adds it to Windows in you know services 
it actually adds a service to Windows and then it automatically starts when Windows boots up. So you it's and then every I think every time you reboot the database gets cleared, but that that's okay. That DNS mask is the same. It's it's just a caching tool. It's a database. It caches. So every time you like I browse to, you know, altervista.org. Well, with this tool, it stores that it stores the DNS name and the IP address. And then what it does is that if I browse to that website again, it tries to access it locally first. If it fails, then it will use one of the other DNS servers to to get an address. But it's a get it. It's a cache. So so it looks up these websites and IP addresses in the database locally first. Now Windows does has Windows kind of has a caching tool, the the host file. But from my experiences, it doesn't work nearly as well as a real caching DNS proxy. It it does not. Okay, so let's download the setup file for Windows. I'm not going to use the portable because I, I want to show you how to install it. It's not that difficult to install. So I want to keep... See how small it is? It's less than a megabyte. It's a half a megabyte. Now I'm going to just start it from here and say yes at the user account control. Then I'm going to click next. Welcome to the acrylic DNS proxy. It's just a caching server. It's really what it is. Proxy, proxy is cache proxy. Same thing. Same. It's basically a firewall. They're similar terms. Although a firewall, whatever. That uh, I don't want to get technical. So click next. and then click finish. Now you have to configure the file. There's a configuration file that you have to add these entries to it. Now I'll show you the configuration file. You click start, you go to all programs, you go to acrylic DNS proxy and then you go to config and then you want to edit the acrylic configuration file. No, you notice how you can purge the acrylic cache data because that's, uh, that's all it really is. It's a cache. It stores every website and that and the IP address that you've surfed until you reboot your computer. Then it will automatically purge it. But you can purge it yourself. You may need to. DNS is not perfect. You know how on Windows you you can flush your. That's a separate video. You can flush your DNS because sometimes the DNS gets corrupt or, and then another time another instance is sometimes websites change their IP address and if you do not have the correct IP address. You're like, well, fuck, I can't browse to Facebook. But your friends are, and they're laughing at you because you can't browse to Facebook. And you rebooted your computer. But generally, that should clear it. But even on Windows, their host file isn't very good, and sometimes you have to manually flush the cache. So that's one instance when you might have to purge the cache is when a website changes the physical IP address. Now we're going to edit the configuration file, say yes at the user account control prompt. That's it. This is the configuration file. You don't have to fuck with anything except for what I'm going to show you. So here it is. The primary address is already set to what I wanted. So I add four. There's primary and it, it's sequential. What that means is that it's when your web, when you try to access a website using this program, Acrylic, it's going to go to the primary server first. But really what it does is it goes to your local, your local cache, your local database. But what you're, what you're giving is the addresses. So every time a new website, a website that is, that is not cached, it will, it will try the primary server first. So instead of using Comcast, now there are other ways. When you go into the Internet Protocol settings for version 4 and version 6, you can manually configure your DNS addresses. That, but this is different. This actually saves the website domain names and their IP addresses in a database. So it saves time. 
and then each time each time you go to Facebook instead of going out to you know 75.75 .75, instead of going out to Comcast DNS server each time which is 75.75.75.75 .75 it go it it accesses the local cached version first and over time that can save you time because it's quicker it takes less time you know what I'm saying now then I'm gonna change the secondary you scroll down it's already there 8.8.4.4 .4 .4. Now there is tertiary, which I'm going to add tertiary, which means three. Quaternary means four, you, but you can add more, and I'll show you that. But let me add these first, 75 dot, 75 dot, I think it's 75 dot, 75. And then com, that's Comcast, but it's only a backup. It's the third option. If for whatever reason, the first two are Google's, 8.8.8 .8 .8 is Google DNS. A lot of people don't like Google. The secondary is also Google 8.8.4.4. I've tested other ones. I've tested OpenDNS, and OpenDNS started to block websites. And I can't have that. Nah, fuck. I don't care if it is free. I wasn't happy with that. And it also starts like loading banners and or little warning messages. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Now I don't know if maybe OpenDNS has changed, but. I'm not a fan of Google, but their DNS servers to me are more reliable than Comcast. But it's up to you. You can use whatever DNS servers you want. Maybe there are other ones out there. Maybe OpenDNS, you know, works better now. Or maybe there are other free DNS servers. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe you built your own. That's another option is you can, if you have your own, you know, virtual private server, if you have your own web space, yeah, you could possibly build your own DNS server and just use it for your your internet connection at home or your office. It's just whatever you want to use. So I'm going to add the fourth one, 75.75.76.76. I'm pretty sure that's correct. What I can do is I can ping that last one to make sure it's correct. That's correct. Another thing you can do is you can test. Now, ping isn't 100% perfect. There's also latency and bit. Ping is a good tool to use. You can test your DNS servers and see which ones have a, a faster ping time. Like we can ping all of them right now. It just it won't take long. And then you can take the average. That average is 27. The other one is 46. That's an indicator that maybe this other server is more congested, or you know, th this can all save time. That's that that when you study computers, you find out this information. You know what I'm saying? And then you can also ping Google's, which is 8.8.a. .8 you can do trace routes. You can do all kinds of tests, and then come up with which which servers seem to work best and have the fastest average ping time that one is 33 and we can then 4.4 .4 and we'll see and but it's not absolute sometimes servers have excellent ping times and then tomorrow you know the same exact server that you ping is atrocious so it just depends on that one's 27 okay so then all you do is you opened it up in notepad so click on file click save Boom. You're you're almost done. Now what you have to do is you have to point your DNS server to to the loopback address, which is 127 or it's local. The local address, which is 127.0.0.1. So right click all programs and let's see control panel and then we're gonna go into you know what another quicker way might be just to go to down here in the task manager go click on here click on open network and sharing center then click on the network connection the, the your internet connection is what you're gonna change then click on properties then go to IPv4 I don't use IPv6 there's no use for it then click on properties right here. 
use the following DNS server address because if you have it set to obtain DNS server address automatically that automatically gets your DNS servers from your internet service provider but a lot of the big internet service providers they just have so many users that the, their DNS servers just get you know overused too much traffic they get they just which makes logical sense I mean some are better than others but you know what I'm saying I've noticed that with Comcast and there's a lot of complaints about Comcast DNS servers so you click on use the following DNS server address they just get backlogged I mean you've got million you got millions of customers and they're all surfing you know Ashley Madison because everybody's cheating on each other and so they're all accessing Facebook and looking for you know dates and Ashley Madison and plenty of fish and you know they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna fucking you know overload their servers you got all those DNS packets flooding in you do not need an alternative DNS a server address. Just click OK and then click close and then click close. And then now it should work. Now what you do is you notice how when I ran the NS lookup, it gave me the IP address of uh it gave me the Comcast IP address for their DNS server. Now I'm gonna run the same NS lookup and it should work. It, instead of using Comcast server instead of going out to Comcast and re and requesting an NS lookup it's going to look it up locally so I'll just go back in history and command prompt if you hit your up and down arrow it has a history there it is right there now as long as it works as long as you did it correctly all you had to do is edit those four fields that I showed you that's it otherwise you don't have to touch the file and just make sure that you get your IP addresses correctly. All it takes is one octet incorrect, just one number incorrect, and it could throw it off. But I would say it would be the first one. But then if the second one is correct, then it will it will it should error out. It goes sequen it goes sequentially. It it tries to use the fir the first the s primary server, then the secondary, then the tertiary and then the quaternary which is four. Oh, I, I lied I was gonna show you the config file I couldn't believe how many entries you can add I lied but not intentionally let's go back so you can add more than four servers if you wanted to it it how it goes look look how many you can add mon monary octanary sepen septenary not not centenary Quinary, and then nonary, denary. I mean, look at how many addresses you can add. <laughs> I mean, this is a great program. It's small. It, it's only five hundred kilobytes. It's less than a megabyte, and I've never had a problem with it. Okay so now so it works if it does not work it will time out you, eventually you get you'll get an error it will, it'll tell you the NS lookup didn't work that tells me that you did not configure I'm not blaming you I'm just saying you did not configure in the network settings correctly when you went in here into the it has to be the internet connection you're gonna edit the the properties for your internet connection in Windows this has to be correct right here this is the loopback address it's the local address every Windows, even Linux every basically Windows Mac Linux they all have a local address and I in a it's 127.0.0.1 which is just a local it's like a dummy IP address it's like a, a loopback address uh, another word is null it's just a null address but what this does is it tells internet protocol transmission control protocol internet protocol on Windows 
oh no don't use comcast no don't use google no don't use open dns aaron's got problems he's got mental issues however <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm not a fan of google but i use their dns because they're better than open dns but i might go back and test out open dns again but they started blocking websites and i was like yeah i'm i'm fucking out of here you have to specify using the following DNS server and you're specifying the local computer which tells it to you to look for a, which is going to it's going to use acrylic cuz acrylic is a service it's a DNS caching proxy service that is running on the local computer at the address of 127.0.0.1 and as long as the service is running and it's configured correctly, you will get a response just like this. The address changed. I, I did an NS lookup for Google.com. The server is unknown. Well, that's fine because it's just a local, a local. It doesn't, you know, so what if it's not known? Up here, it said that it was Google.com. No, excuse me. It ha they have their own subdomain. CDNS01, which I assume stands for Comcast Domain Name Server 01.comcast.net. I don't know if with acrylic you can specify a, a DNS. But you don't need that. You know, it's just, I don't, you don't need that, but you might be able to. But I, even on Linux, you might be, on Linux, you can add a domain name for local. But it has the address, which is, the loopback address and then it had a non-authoritative answer google.com and it gave me a different IP address but it did give me an NS lookup and then Google has different addresses for their website I know that I don't know about their I don't know if Comcast and and I, I'm not sure how I don't know if it's all on the same physical server or if they've got like a server farm for their DNS. I just would I don't know that. That I don't even know if I could find that out. All right, so I think I beat this as a dead horse. I'm going to transition and go into overtime. But I showed you how to install it. I showed you how to configure the edit the configuration file. I showed you how to add the DNS. I showed you how to change the DNS server from obtain automatically to the loopback address so it talks and so now, so every time, you, even when you ping, it's gonna, it's what, what it's gonna do is it's gonna, it's gonna send the packet locally first. And then every time you do an NS lookup, it's gonna, you, if you're using the acrylic dns cache proxy it's a database and that can save time because it doesn't have to wait it doesn't have to send the packet requests to 75.75.75.75 which is way out on the internet somewhere for all i know it's halfway across the country well i i'm now getting my name lookups locally and then if you browse if you go to a website It's our it's already cached. Boom. Now with with your naked eye you might not be able to tell it's quicker, but you might be able to. It just depends on. You might be able to tell with your naked eye, oh man, these web pages load quicker. It's because it it, it, it because it takes less time. Your computer is not sitting there waiting for a second or five seconds for the DNS server to respond. It's already got the address. Oh, God, God damn it, Aaron, you're slow. God, Aaron, come on, we gotta go. I've already, I'm up. I've already started the vehicle. I put gas in. We got a full tank. I even loaded your luggage because I knew you're, you're, you're lazy, Aaron. You sleep in. You're a bum. God damn it, Aaron. If you don't, <laughs> Aaron, if you don't get in the car, I'm gone. We're going to Vegas, but I'll leave without you, Aaron. God damn it. And you're not gonna get any good-looking girls and you're gonna have to sit at home as the lazy bum no good that you are Aaron okay 
So in closing, let's go over the blog post and make sure I, I can already hear it. I can already hear the trolls. Yeah, you talk too long. You love to hear your voice. No. No, motherfuckers. Do you know that for the first, like, two years on YouTube, two or three years, I didn't even appear on camera? I didn't want to appear on camera because I got sick and tired of the nasty comments. Do I sit there here like a prima donna? Do I? Do I sit here on my camera like a prima donna? Do I sit here? Do I stare at you? Do I? Uh, th no. I, I, have my I have my camera in, in the corner. I very, I very rarely appear like that because I'm not a narcissist. I don't even like appearing on camera, being honest, because all you do is get attacked. But these motherfuckers on YouTube will attack you even if you don't appear on camera. Why, why the fuck do you care how long my videos are? Get the fuck off my YouTube channel. Go watch somebody else. You're a fucking lazy. You are fucking lazy. I'm not talking to my audience. I'm talking to the trolls. It's not my fault you have the attention span of a gnat. My attention span goes hours. I can listen to people on the internet talk about computers for five hours straight. It's not my fault you have the mental incapacity that you're a mental midget and your mind has shut down, your pineal gland has glazed over. So, all right. So let's quickly go over the blog and see if I missed anything. That's another reason why I make videos as long as I want that are as necessary because I don't want to forget anything. But you got these motherfuckers on the internet that it doesn't matter. You can make a one minute video, but oh my God, if you forgot something, you're going to hear it. If you make a one minute video about a kitten, well, you might not get that attacked much. But if you make a one video about technology and helping people out with computers and technology, you will not forget. You will hear it all day long. Your, 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 your videos are too long, Aaron. Get the fuck off my YouTube channel. Go watch somebody else's video. Go watch some tech channel that makes one minute videos. I make long videos because I don't just cover, you know, well, okay, let's see, you can buy it. No, no. I cover more technical topics that take a lot longer to explain. I've said this before and I'll continue to say it again. It shall not matter. It does not matter to me how long a video somebody makes. I watch, I listen to other tech channels and some of them make five hour videos. There's nothing wrong with that. Some of them make five minute videos. Some of them don't talk. Some of them don't appear on camera. You don't sit you don't see me typing in some nasty judgmental comment. Well, you, uh, you're just a narcissist, Aaron. You just love to hear your voice, Aaron. That's it. That's all it is, Aaron. You're selfish. You're a liar. You're a narcissist. You, you just love to, to hear your own voice, Aaron. It does not matter as long as the video is productive and solves a problem or helps you or, may, or you learn from it. That's all that matters. I've sat through videos that were like 10 minutes and it was a person typing in. They just typed in on a on notepad and then screen captured it and showed you how to whatever. It could have been done in five minutes possibly if they talked, but, but so I'm not here to judge people. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't blame them. Do you think 20 years ago I was like, well, gee whiz, I'm going to put my face out there. Gee whiz, 20, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I decided, well, I'm going to put my face out in public. Well, I'm going to put my voice out in public. I'm going to put my skin color out in public. No, do you think, no, do you think 20 years ago that was my dream? Fuck no. All right, let's get back to this blog post. Okay, so we went over... Explaining DNS, how you can 
reduce the response times that your computer has to wait in order to download a web page. And then I link to the website where you can download the portable version to test it out. You, you still have to configure the file and add in your DNS servers and you also have to configure your DNS server in transmission control protocols, IP internet protocol in Windows to point to your local machine 127.0.0.1 otherwise it's not going to work properly. It supports Windows 2000 XP Vista 7, 8, and 10. You can test out the portable version first and see if that's what I did. I tried it out first and I was like, holy fuck, this works just like DNS Mask. And boom, I've used it ever since. I used it on all of my computers, every single one. I, add, I actually take the time to install it. But you could certainly, you could also create a batch file. That's another video. See, I love to talk. And you think I'm going to stop making videos because of some fucking schmuck? that judges me even though he doesn't even know who I am you got these fucking piece of shit keyboard warriors that motherfucker wouldn't have the fucking guts and the balls to fucking talk that shit to my face I bet you 99% chance that that little bit that was an older man that was a man that lacked color too I might add that was a translucent I've noticed that pattern as well that's a reason why I'm a fan of Colin Kaepernick. I can only imagine. I don't want to imagine what he's put. He's going through right now. I can't imagine that. You try to do something good. You try to help people out. And what do you get for it? You get shit. So you have to edit the configuration file once you download and install it. You need to add your DNS servers, and I and I included examples. Primary for the first server, secondary second, tertiary third, quaternary fourth. So this, what this program does, is the first time it tries to browse a website, it tries to look it up through the the primary server. If that server is down or it times out, it tries to look up the the DNS. And the IP address, it tries to resolve DNS from the IP, IP to DNS, to the, from the secondary server. If that server is down or times out, it tries from the tertiary. If that server is down or times out, it tries from the quaternary. And it, what is it, Mon nanary or monary? Or, it just goes on and on and on. <laughs> you can add, what, 10 or whatever. And then I also, what else did I add that was very important? Was there something else? Oh, I need to run so I can make more videos so I can annoy people. I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> I'm here to help people and make a few coins. That's it. Here's a final, I have not tested this, but this program can also block ads. It can block ads when you surf the internet. Now I use, I don't want to, I'm not going to, no, this is where I'm going to refrain because this is bad for a YouTube content creator. It's bad. We make our money. I spend all this time testing on my own computers and invest. It took me a long time to find this tool. There's not that many DNS cache proxy tools for Windows and that is free and, and that works good and that I would recommend and then I had to you know test it out and then I had to run it for a while and then you know and then I it's it's once you use computers but still you have to learn something new oh I gotta edit the configuration file oh that's how it works oh, okay now this has the capability to block ads I have not tried it out and tested it but I'm assuming it wouldn't be that difficult so it has that capability that's not what I use this program for. That would be bad for my business. I make money by people viewing my ads. And now on my website, people can hire me. I charge, I'm debating, I might charge $60 an hour or $80 an hour. If on one of my blog posts, if you're still having problems, you can hire me. I've got 
I also have a support chat. People can now chat to me live. So instead of bowing down and putting my tail behind my legs and allowing these trolls and these harassers and they're to me they're jealous. It must be jealousy because I, I don't I don't I don't waste my time. I don't have that I don't have time. I don't have fucking time to sit there and and then you know leave comments all over now I do respond. Sometimes when people attack me, I immediately block them from my YouTube channel. That's a lifetime ban. And then also, if they piss me off enough, I will go out to their YouTube channels and I will thumb down their videos or I will leave nasty comments on their channel. And then I block them so I will never hear their response. But but anything outside of that, I don't allow people to waste my time. I hate fucking people that waste my time. You know what I'm saying? So instead of, you know, getting all emotional, I get angry once in a while, but instead of letting get it get to me in, in my way, I'm going to be writing three blogs a day, and I'm going to try to make three videos a day because I've our statistics. I've already done the math. I average a certain, I make a certain dollar per video and I make a certain dollar amount per blog. And so actually it is worth my time because now people can hire me. They can chat to me and then I can charge money. Oh, you want me to help? And I can connect remotely to people and help them solve their problems. And I can charge $60 an hour or $80 or whatever. That's my plan. That's my goal is, you know, I still... I'm marketing my computer repair business, but that's kind of part time at this point. It's just it's just too it's too bipolar. You go through these you just go through these slow periods and then you're like, well holy fuck. And you know what I'm saying? Whereas I prefer to make money over the internet, but it's a lot of work. YouTube content creators were not lazy. We're not prima donnas. Some of us, maybe some of us are narcissistic and we think we're celebrities. Nobody knows me. I'm a nobody. And that's fine. I may never receive 10,000 or 20,000 YouTube subscribers. I don't fucking care. You know what? I don't like YouTube subscribers. You know why? Because I've studied it. You don't make money off your subscribers. Because a lot of your subscribers, they don't watch your videos or they're, they're not going to click on your ads. Now, if they start donating money to you, if they start tipping you, if they start signing up as a as a patron on your Patreon, yeah. But a lot of them, you don't make money off of them. I don't even ask for subscribers. Not not once on my channel have I ever said, you know, thumb. I don't even ask you to like my videos. I don't fucking care about that crap. I don't care if you like my video. I don't care if you dislike my video. It does not, I don't care about that crap. I care about the metrics. I care about the math. I don't care how many subscribers I have. I have almost 2 million views. Here, if you think I'm narcissistic, fine, I'll be narcissistic. Motherfucker. My channel, if you go to it, I only have 1,866 subscribers. That's nothing. That's nothing. But you know what? Look at how many views I have. I'm going to probably get, I was hoping to get to the 2 million mark by this month, end of this month. I probably won't get there. I will get there by next month. I have 2 million views. And I've only been a part-timer on YouTube for like, let's see, I started in what, 2014? And then I quit for like six months or a year, something like that, or very rarely. And then now last year, 2015, I worked, yeah, for a while. Now 2000, yeah, 2015, and then last year. This year, I really, but then this year I get busy. And so, but I'm going to try to make a concerted effort to make three videos a day if I can do it. And then three blog posts a day. But I've got two million views. But, but what i i have literally no subscribers you don't fucking need subscribers you don't you just have to create content you just have to make videos 
and then you search it and optimize them. You know why I have 2 million views and literally no subscribers? It's because I've studied search engine optimization. You have to title your videos. You have to use keywords. But you got these jealous motherfuckers and it, this is a pattern. I would say over the last three, four months, close to maybe six months, the only people that attack me now, or now within the last six months, I've had a couple of teens attack me and call me nasty names. And then, but I would say the last three or four months, I've noticed a pattern. It's almost always another YouTube content creator that has, I would say, less than 100 subscribers, less than 10,000 views. I mean, you know, less than 100,000 views. They take the time to attack me, call me narcissistic, and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. What is your fucking problem? You and this these are all, some of these people are older than I am. This this man that that compared to my complexion is very light translucent no color he had gray hair 60s 70s i don't know 50s whatever so i would say 60s at least and he he wastes his time attacking me and he thinks i'm gonna stop making videos fuck you fuck no i actually like being hated i'm different than you are when you motherfuckers start to hate me guess what that energizes me. I work even harder. Now I'm going to make more videos on YouTube and I'm going to write more blog posts. And now I monetize my, my YouTube, my blog. People can chat to me live and I monitor it. I'm getting more emails. I'm getting, you know, I still get questions. You know what I'm saying? And I even, I'm going to hopefully start getting customers and then I can help them remotely. And it's all because of you trolls. It's your fault. You trolls, it's your fault that now my business is getting bigger on the internet and hopefully one day I will exclusively be a internet only entrepreneur where I make most, if not all, my money all off the internet. There's all kinds of ways. There's AdSense. There's affiliate products. You can sell your own products. You can provide your own services. You can bill people. You can, they can hire you. And then you can, you can, you know, interact with them. You can ask, answer the, and then when people ask me questions, now I, I have video material. And then I go out and I look for keywords search engine optimization i look for keywords that are 10 20 30 50 dollars per bid it depends on what your niche you are the the technology niche is a good niche it's it's one of the it's probably top five top ten i would say niches the most profitable niches on the, and that includes youtube it bet it depends on how you do it so i think i went over the blog post thoroughly adios Good. Have fun with your slow, you know, response times from your crappy DNS. But if you follow my blog post and you follow my tips and you learn on your own, well, you might as just save time instead of sitting there. And you can block ads. Adios.